an ample hand for our training. Ma'am, welcome to this Synergy 2021. Welcome you, ma'am. I'm very glad to see you there. And I can see many English faculties of different schools here. Welcome all of you to this session. I'm sure you will get a good, correct idea of the rationalized curriculum and assessment tool from our Smitha ma'am. I also welcome all the executive members of Malapuram Central Sahodaya and let's continue this spirit ahead. Let me conclude by saying the most beautiful thing we can wear in front of our students is confidence. And I'm sure our Smitha ma'am will help you uh, to gain that confidence. All of you, welcome again. Welcome all. Yes, Naufal uh, sir. Whether Smitha ma'am can deal with yes. 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 Over to you, Smitha ma'am. Yeah, uh, thank you. Respected uh, office bearers of Malapuram Central Sahodaya, fellow principals and my dear teachers, my humble pranam to all of you. I'm so uh, humbled uh, to be here in this gathering. Okay, uh, actually I feel a part of uh, Malapuram Sahodaya because most of the office bearers in the Malpram Central Sahodia are very closely related to me. And once they uh, call and ask me to take a session, I can never deny them. So that's how uh, the session was taken over. And uh, thank you for this opportunity, Naufal sir and uh, Anir sir. It's nice to be uh, part of the team. I think uh, I can begin now. Yeah, man. I'm thank audible you. and uh, everything is fine, right? Yes, are audible. audible is okay. Yeah. And uh, one thing before I begin, I would like to tell that uh, I'm uh, right now, uh, I'm at Vainad uh, and the terrain is uh, actually like that. And most of the time we do have connectivity issues. So if at all I go off offline, just call me on my phone because I will be involved in the class and I'll be taking it. And I don't know whether I've gone offline. So uh, if at all I go offline, do uh, call me and inform. I do have uh, two or three arrangements done so that maybe one or two minutes will be lagging, but uh, still I think we'll keep the session uh, live, okay? So with that request, I think I begin the class. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, Is my screen visible? Yes. Okay, thank you. I think we'll uh, start with the name. Uh, I, I, I simply love the name of uh, the teacher's training program uh, that is given, Synergy 2021. It's just like syncing our energies together to synergize, to come together and uh, learn new things. So uh, Malapram Central Sahodia is definitely doing a great job of bringing teachers together and uh, educating them, empowering them. So let's hope that this program will be synergizing every one of us. Uh, I would like to start the uh, session. So when I was thinking about an opening slide, this is something that I felt uh, is more apt at this moment because 
uh, I felt that this is a situation that most of the CBSC teachers are going through because circulars being rolling out every day, every single day new circulars are coming, training programs are being uploaded uh, and uh, we are actually put into a, a, a uh, we are confused, we are perplexed like where to go, what to look at and all those things. So this is a kind of a state of mind that most of us are having nowadays because of uh, the new changes. The changes are hitting us so fast and we are in a very perplexed situation. So let's try and break down things and uh, make things a bit clearer for us so that we are able to implement all the changes in our classroom. I think we should start from this uh, circular that rolled out on July 5th. From this onwards, uh, the changes started happening. And that is, the, uh, from this onwards, we have to be bothered about the changes for this present 2021-22 session. Uh, this was a circular that rolled out on July uh, 5th. It is about the special scheme of assessment for board examination for classes 10 and 12 for the session 2021 and 22. Uh, let's have it in mind that this session, is, uh, that is this circular, is uh, for only this current session, 2021 and 2022. All the examination reforms that they are talking about in this circular will, uh, will be there only this year. Okay, it's not for next year or anything like that. So let's have that in mind only for one year. So actually what CBSE tells us is, will be uh, both 10th and 12th standard board exam will remain board exam will remain and it will be conducted in two terms at the end of first term and at the end of second term two board exams will be conducted in a year for class 10 and for class 12. so how is that going to happen it is like uh, two exams with 50 percentage approximately 50 percentage of portions uh, in both the terms. First term exam will be conducted in the month of uh, November or November to December and it will be 90 minutes MCQ paper. Uh, have that in mind. First term exam it will be conducted in the month of November to December and it will be 90 minutes MCQ paper. And second term exam it, it will happen just like any other board exam in the month of March. It is a two-hour board exam uh, or it can also become a 90 minutes MCQ. Two-hour board exam with all the normal lo uh, long answer type, short answer type, uh, reading, writing, all those things e with everything. Two-hour board exam, it will be in second term. Otherwise, if things, if, if the situations are not conducive, it might be again 90 minutes MCQ. When we talk about first term exam, uh, the circular very clearly tells us that the question paper will be sent from the board and uh, with the marking scheme. Okay, and uh, it, and it, it should be answered in OMR sheet. Today, uh, if the principals are here, today we have got a circular, uh, we have got a mail from CBSE uh, talking about an OMR uh, app that we need to have in our school so that the children of 10th and 12th can take the exam. So, uh, OMR sheets, uh, uh, children will be answering the questions in OMR sheet and after that it should be scanned and sent to the board or if they are sending the marking scheme, the very same day it should be evaluated and the marks, marks to be uploaded. That is what the board talks about the first term exam. Second term exam, as I told you, it is two hour board exam uh, and uh, it will be like a subjective exam, not the objective NCQ type. But if the situations are not conducive, again, second term also we have to go to uh, 90 minutes NCQ. So again, uh, when we talk about this, uh, like the situations have become so uncertain that even when you see the uh, circular, you feel like it's a kind of funny because there are plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. There are plenty of options given to us. So we have to know all those things because uh, all the situations 
means they have considered all the situations like if the first term exam and the second term exams are conducted from the school then equal weightage will be given to both the marks that is when the mark list comes out 50 percentage of first uh, first term mark and 50 percentage of second term mark will be taken if both the exams are conducted from the school if first term exam is conducted online and second term exam is conducted from the school or from the uh, centers then more weightage will be given to second term exam in the same way if the second term exam is conducted online and first term exam is conducted from the school then more weightage will be given to first term exam and if both the term exams are conducted online means this year completely just like last year we were not able to open the school at all uh, 10th and 12th we were working last year but if if the situations are like that with the uh, cases increasing and throughout the year we had to keep the uh, school closed in such cases again there will be uh, we'll be taking first term second term marks internal assessment and uh, marks plus there will be a moderation policy from the board just like this year so all the four uh, uh, possibilities are taken by the board and this is how they have given the circular so they have told about uh, the portions being divided into 50 percentage and when you talk about that they have come out with 50 percentage uh, rationalized syllabus which we will see in a uh, while i hope this is clear if it is clear if you can just give me uh, one or two messages in the chat box i would move to the next slide Okay, it's clear. Okay. Okay, so th thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll move on to the next thing. Yeah, it is regarding the syllabus. I told you it is like 50 percentage, uh, approximately 50 percentage. If you look at the syllabus, it's not exactly 50 percentage. But approximately 50% of syllabus, it is uh, the syllabus is being divided like that. Mm. Everything is available on the CBSE website, but we'll just have a quick look at it. This is the class 9 syllabus, term wise syllabus. Uh, reading will be having discursive passage, case-based factual passage where the uh, visual input, uh, statistical uh, data, chart, etc. will be given and based on that questions will be asked. So this is what uh, in the reading you can expect. Writing, descriptive paragraph, short story. And grammar is for both the terms. Grammar, they haven't given it as term one and term two. Both the terms, all the all the eight uh, items are coming. Okay, and the literature, they have divided. The same way, term two, when you come, again reading discursive passage and uh, case based factual passage. It's same for both term one and term two. Term two, in writing, you have descriptive paragraph. That is diary, uh, diary writing. And then you have story writing based on beginning line, outline, and cues. That is, you have to give a beginning line and there will be uh, prompts given uh, which the children will develop it into a story. Grammar, as I told you, it is uh, the same for both the terms. That, is, that, that means that we have to complete the grammar portions in term one itself. Because for term one and term two, it is it remains the same so questions can be asked uh, in term one also from all these uh, chapters okay 
so this is how the weightage goes for reading 10 marks writing and grammar 10 marks literature 20 marks so 40 marks it will be the question paper will be for 40 marks and internal assessment 10 marks internal assessment is something that we need to know in a detailed manner that we will come to so internal assessment it is 10 marks so together it is 50 marks each term okay so two terms 50 plus 50 that makes it 100 so this is how it is in class 9 when we come to class 10 again discursive passage and case based uh, factual passage the same as in class 9 but the number of words will differ there, uh, there you can see it is uh, 200 to 250 words. When you come to 10th standard, it is 300 to 350 words. That means the reading speed should increase. Reading and comprehending speed should increase from class 10 to class, uh, sorry, for, from class 9 to class 10. Uh, writing. When we come to writing, it is all letters. Letter to editor, letter of complaint, uh, both official and business complaint letters. Then again, grammar. Here also, class 10, uh, teachers, please note, uh, again, in class 10 also, grammar is not divided as term 1 and term 2. Uh, in term 1, all the grammar chapters are included. That means we have to complete the grammar portions before uh, November exam. So, uh, make sure that you are completing the grammar portions before uh, November exam because questions will be asked from any of these chapters. When you come to term two, again, uh, it is a discursive passage and case-based factual passage for reading. Writing, it is letter of order, letter of inquiry, and analytical paragraph. Uh, there will be a chart given, there will be a flow chart given, there will be a map or there will be a report given and you, uh, the children will have to analyze it, interpret it, and then write a paragraph. Grammar remains the same. Here, again, what we saw in class 9, the same remains here. Reading, 10 marks. Writing, 10 marks. Literature, it is 20 marks. So, total it is 40 and internal assessment, 10. So, 50. So, internal assessment, 20 marks comes like that and 80 marks is taken like this. That is, uh, the examination mark is 80 and 20 marks internal. So, how the internal uh, assessment is done, we will come to it. Um, I think we will just go through the 11th and 12th portions also. 11th standard portions. Reading comprehension, you can see 13 marks. Okay. 13 marks and writing it is 12 marks. Reading here, unseen passage. It is factual, it can be discursive, then case-based unseen passage. Uh, and in term 2 for 11th standard, they have note making and summarizing. Please note, uh, term 2, they have note making and summarizing. And uh, when you come to writing skills and grammar, again grammar is for both the terms, okay, determiners, tenses and reordering of sentences it is for both the terms when it comes to writing skills it is notice writing in term one business or official letter making inquiries registering complaints asking giving information placing orders and sending replies and also a speech for term one when it comes to term two again there is a official letters and debate so these are the writing items that we need to teach the children. And literature is given. So here again, you can see the mark, uh, how the mark, marks are distributed. 13 marks for reading, 12 marks for writing, that makes it 25. And 15 marks for literature, that makes it 40. Again, uh, for plus 1 and plus 2, it is not uh, internal assessment. Internal assessment is all about A ASL. Now it is not ASL. It is ALS. Okay. They have changed the order. 
but uh, it has not been reflected in this. It is ALS. Okay, 10 plus 10. So that makes it 20 marks and uh, 40 plus 40 for examination. Then if you come to plus two, plus two also uh, almost the same reading comprehension, the same, but you can see the marks difference. Uh, teachers, those who are taking in plus two, kindly note the marks difference because reading comprehension, here the mark is 14 marks. Okay, earlier it was 13 in plus one. Here it is 14 and eight marks for writing skill because we don't have grammar here. Uh, for plus two, there is no grammar and eight marks it is for writing skills. The portions that were uh, deleted last year, it remains deleted. Only change you can see is last year we had commercial advertisements. This year there is no commercial advertisement, only classified advertisement in writing skill. So notice writing, classified advertisement alone. Commercial advertisement is not there. Uh, when you come to term two, it is formal and informal invitation cards and replies to invitation. That is short writing. Long writing, again it is letter and article writing. Here it is letter for uh, letter of application for a job and report writing. So 40 marks the exam and uh, 10 marks for ALS. I hope uh, that is clear. Let me come back. The syllabus, uh, if it's clear, if we can move to the next slide. Ma'am, uh, hello, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, sorry for the interruption. Uh, this is Irina. I have a doubt, ma'am. If term yeah. one is purely objective in nature, how will the letter yeah. question be asked? Yeah, yeah. I, I will come to that. Come to that. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Thank and, you. So much. Uh, when we come to the in uh, internal assessment and all those things, we'll be uh, talking about that. Excuse okay. me, ma'am. Ma'am, can I yeah. clear something? Ma'am, yeah, uh, it was given that uh, in the second term, it is not ALS, it is project in plus two. In the circular, it says, ma'am. Yeah, it, uh, it is project plus viva. We will be coming to ah. that. We will be discussing it in a uh, detail. in detailed manner. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Sir. Project plus uh, uh, viva. Viva, yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, so till this, uh, if it's clear, we will move ahead. Because it's all about facts. It's not uh, like any other training programs. That's why I'm asking you whether it's clear or not. It's clear. Okay, thank you. So... Now, uh, so that is the syllabus thing. And now let's uh, talk about the internal assessment, how we need to do the internal assessment. It is uh, 10 marks each term uh, from 9th standard till 12th. It is 10 marks each term. So we will have to uh, come to that. Okay, this, this is something that you can see in the CBSC uh, site. It talks about the internal assessment uh, for classes 9 to 12. Let's see class 9 and 10, internal assessment, how it has to be done. 80 marks, it is for 
uh, the paper pen exam, 80 marks and uh, 20 marks, 20 marks internal assessment, 10 marks for each term. So how is that going to be given? It is three marks for periodic test. In a year, uh, the board tells the schools to conduct three periodic tests. Periodic tests should be restricted to three. Okay, it can be like two periodic tests in first term and one in second term, or you can go vice versa also, like one periodic test in uh, first term and two periodic. It, it is completely left to the liberty of the schools. Okay, so three periodic tests we'll be having. Uh, and uh, first term, whether we conduct one periodic test or two periodic tests, we take three marks uh, out of that. Okay, three marks is for periodic test and two marks for multiple assessments. More assessments that we need to do in the class. Now, uh, so it should be assessing the four basic activities that we are doing to assess all these skills that can be considered as multiple assessment activities. Uh, it can be role play, it can be uh, quiz competition, it can be debates, it can be skits. Uh, also, art integrated learning should happen in this. You know the difference between art integrated learning and art integrated project. So art integrated learning means the all the, uh, suppose we are uh, asking the children to do a theater, a theater work. That comes as a multiple assessment. Okay, that comes as the classroom pedagogy. Art integrated in classroom pedagogy. We are uh, making the children to do a role play or uh, we ask them to uh, come out with a chart to uh, paint pictures and uh, to visualize a uh, poem and to come out. All those are art integrated uh, learning activities. So all those things can be coming under this multiple assessment um, thing. So that is for two marks, uh, three marks for periodic test, two marks for multiple assessment uh, embedded in the classroom pedagogy, two marks for portfolio. Uh, when we give an assessment or sorry, assignment or anything, the children will be submitting. So please document it and that is considered as the portfolio like how they went about with the assignment, the uh, the introduction part, how they have taken it and uh, the conclusion, whatever it is documented, that is called as the portfolio. And finally, uh, subject enrichment activity, three marks. It is here that we talk about the uh, ASL, okay? And also here, uh, it is in the subject enrichment activity that CBSC talks about the art integrated project. So uh, when you see this circular, it is clear that it is given as speaking, listening activities or project, art integrated project. So uh, from this, it, it, it is leading, it is misleading us a bit. It is speaking, listening activities or project. Uh, but I think for a safer side, what we need to do is if we can club both these things, like if the art integrated project can assess the speaking listening activities, then we have it all together and uh, we can give three marks for that. So this is how it is. 10 marks, periodic test three marks, multiple assessment two marks, portfolio two marks, and finally the subject enrichment activity C for three marks. That is for class 9 and 10. I think that is clear. Now class 11 and 12, when we come to class 11 and 12. Yeah, when we come to class 11 and 12, it is like this. Uh, again, there is plan A and plan B, okay? Uh, term one, if it is possible to conduct in-person assessment, then assessment of listening and speaking skill will be done for 10 marks and it will be done 
in person by internal examiner that means the teacher whoever is taking in that class can do the assessment scenario 2 if the schools are uh, closed then the same assessment can be done online and again it will be done by the internal examiner uh, als will be done in by the internal examiner in term 1 either in person if the schools are opening or online if the schools remain closed that is term 1 10 marks okay and when you come to term 2 it is like assessment of project and viva we need to give the children a project work and uh, that pro uh, the project report carries 5 mark okay it is not als when we come to term 2 it is uh, a project work and viva project work in the sense project report carries 5 marks and 5 marks will be uh, for viva which will be done by external examiner that means we need to get our children ready prepare our children to take a uh, uh, viva uh, by an external examiner uh, delegated by the board so that is term 2 again 10 marks as i told you for uh, term 2 it is again 10 marks it will be the assessment of project work and uh, and viva and also this they uh, say that it would be done the external examiner uh, viva will be done either in person if the schools are open or online if the schools are kept closed so that is regarding term 2 10 marks so that is regarding plus 1 and plus 2 yeah when you go uh, down the circular you have a little more of clarity into the assessment in listening and speaking skills what are the uh, listening skills that has to be assessed and what are the speaking skills that has to be assessed everything is very clearly given uh, when we come to classes 9 and 10 what are we supposed to do uh, for assessing listening and speaking skills it is recommended that listening and speaking skills should be regularly practiced art integrated projects based on activities like role play skit dramatization etc must be used as a part of uh, assessment in listening and speaking skills activities can be selected from ncert book interactions uh, for assessing the listening activities record keeping you have to have the record kept uh, till 3 uh, months it should be kept in the school after the declaration of result we don't have to uh, send to the board uh, anything re uh, regarding the als okay so i think uh, when we go through this uh, circular you can see for class 11 and 12 again they have given what are the things listening skills what are the skills that has to be assessed speaking what is it that we need to assess and for speaking we have to refer the uh, books the activities given in the books can be used additional activities can be the ch the teachers are having uh, liberty to um, what design additional activities to assess the listening and speaking skills and when you i would i would just like to show you something yeah. when you come to project these are some of the suggestive works that they have given as project work one is interview based research children uh, can be given a topic to conduct a research based on an interview like they need to go around and interview people and then uh develop a research report okay so that is one project work that can be given another pro project work is 
listen to podcasts interviews radio or tv documentary and to give their report either countering or agreeing with the speakers so the same podcast can be given to the whole class or different podcast can be given that that depends on the teacher uh third uh, suggestive activity is students to create their own video and audio after writing a script fourth one is to write direct and present a theatrical production or one act play these are the suggestive project work that can be given in english so i think uh, that is clear the internal assessment part if that is clear if you can send me few uh, message in the chat box it would be great any uh, doubt on that excuse me ma'am yeah excuse yeah, yes. me ma'am uh, Yeah. Uh, could you suggest some methods by which we can keep some records in this online mode of academics? How would we keep records of students' activities for speaking and listening or for internal assessment? Sir, uh, how we can keep the record of uh, uh, record yeah, the of activities? Uh, that record. Are you, activities are you for, talking about? Uh, ALS are you talking about ALS oh, yeah. yeah mainly mainly about ALS you are talking about ALS okay sir i'll tell mm-hmm. you how it can be done uh, suppose you are doing a listening activity okay suppose you are doing a listening activity uh, what do we do online we ah, present yes. a listening script uh, like it can be a podcast or whatever it is we present it and we ask the children to based on that they have to listen and they have to answer so uh, beforehand we can give them google forms okay and they can when they are listening this uh, listening activity can be given when they listen they uh, mark the answers and they send it back okay so that is okay. that is our document for listening activity a google form can be sent or if you are having some learning uh, platforms uh, which marks the uh, examination and all those things that can also be used that that is one example i am saying for listening activity for speaking activity uh, suppose uh, we are asking the children to come out with a, a presentation on a topic or if they are presenting some topic okay that ha- that can be send as a video and we just need to uh, keep it as a folder whatever we have evaluated okay ma'am Thank i think you. that is clear and uh, oh, and yes, another ma'am. thing is like suppose if we are doing the project work project work we don't have to keep all these things as um, a, as a document instead only the project report need to be collected from the children and that that can be maintained as a document like how they started the work how many people they have interviewed all those things should come no and uh, the questionnaire mm-hmm. they prepared all those things so that that only need to be documented we don't have to uh, document all the process and if at all they are having one or two uh, photos of it all those things can be attached the project work uh, uh, the children will be submitting in pdf so that is enough sir we don't have to okay. uh, go for anything elaborate we just ask the children to submit it keep a folder and uh, have it there okay so we will keep a di- digital record of these things that's all thank you digital record sir that is enough yeah okay okay thank you ma'am so there is a uh, leya rajesh has raised hand please uh, uh, miss you can unmute and ask
so that is the internal assessment thing and one last thing that we will come to uh, i think this is clear shall we move to the next uh, topic just one more uh, topic that we need to cover till 440 was the time uh, for okay okay so uh, now when we come to the mcqs as english teacher definitely we have a question how can we uh, assess the writing part the uh, writing skill of a child through mcq that is the biggest question that we all are having in mind uh, one thing when you are conducting the periodic assessments please ensure that you are assessing their writing skills okay because writing skills can never be assessed through mcqs writing skills can be assessed only if the children are given a chance to write so uh, please ensure that during the periodic assessments that you are conducting you please ask the children to uh, give enough uh, opportunity for the children to write and uh, have that in the question paper that is one thing mcqs definitely it will be based on this writing passage uh next week we are going to get the sample question paper from cbsc so this is one doubt we all have asked cbsc and uh, uh by next week we will be getting sample question papers from cbsc which tells us about the writing uh, uh when we get the sample question paper we will definitely know how they have um uh, taken this writing uh, means how they have prepared mcq on this writing skills till then we don't have any sample question papers um uh, that is we cannot go uh, guessing things once we get the cbsc sample question paper next week it will be released that's what i heard and once it is released we'll be very clear about it but ensure that we are making the children to write and practice because anyway term 2 it is all about writing most probably uh, let's hope that we there will be a proper board exam conducted not this uh, mcqs and all those things so uh, by term 2 anyway they'll have to do it so in term 1 please make sure during the periodic test that you are conducting you are giving chance for the children to uh, write and uh, submit things okay so that is what uh, uh, i have to tell you and uh, one last thing that i would like to show you is regarding the types of mcqs that we need to prepare these are the types of mcqs that uh, board uh, ask the teachers to prepare it is simple mcq complex mcq assertion reasoning mcq okay what is a simple mcq we all know it there will be one stem item and there will be four option that is a simple mcq okay so this is something uh, we are very much familiar with complex mcq complex mcq is like this so, uh, you can when you see this example you understand uh, it is multiple selection type one one is like this multiple selection type you can see the question which of the following is a characteristic of a virus so the answers given are one and two only two and three only one and four only one two and three only so uh the options in the options there might be more than one right answer or maybe all the four answers might be right so th that is multiple selection type so this is a complex mcq type 1 type 2 is sequencing and ordering type that is which of the following route is taken by a pollen tube after pollination of the flower this is a science uh, question okay but the same can be prepared by english for example uh, if we are talking about the uh, progress of a story okay so that is the sequencing type mcq that also comes under complex mcq so simple mcq complex mcq 
And the last one is asser assertion reasoning type MCQ or true or false type. That is, two sentences will be given, and the t uh, and the children will be asked to uh, find out which is true and uh, what is the correct explanation and all those things. So these are the three uh, types of MCQs that we need to frame when we are conducting the exams. So I, I hope that I have given you a small picture about all these things. One teacher had asked me like whether I can share all these things. I can definitely share, no problem at all. So if we have any doubt, I think we can go for it. So now, well, sir, you told me 440, it is like 440. Is there, is there anything else to be added or they can ask their queries? Yes, ma'am. Hello, Smita, ma'am. Uh, yes, yes, ma yes. So, I ha yes, yes ma'am, I have a doubt. Like, uh, do, will we have uh, case-based or uh, uh, reasoning type questions in English? If so, can you just give us an it example of how such questions will be asked? It is there, it is there. Uh, uh, that is like 10% um, uh, of uh, MCQs will be case-based. That is what in yes. class 10. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Like, uh, if, but okay, normally we have seen case-based uh, questions in mathematics and science. And of course, in a social science also. But when it comes to English, what will be the type of question that can be asked? With, uh, can you just like, give us an example? Yeah. Yeah, uh, suppose uh, uh, we have a chapter like. Mama, uh, like to God. They, the, fun they had, the fun they had is uh, in class nine, I believe. Yes, ma'am. Isn't it? So uh, in, in that chapter, if you can uh, see deeper into the chapter, that chapter connects very closely to what is happening nowadays. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So what they do is uh, from from a chapter, from a, a particular uh, portion, something that is so much related uh, to the children, so much relatable to the children, such topics will be taken. And based on that, what the child uh, thinks about a particular situation or what is the uh, child's interpretation of a situation, such questions will be Asked. That is what is called okay. as case-based questions. So, yes, ma'am. Uh, so you uh, you mean to say that the question will be a sort of applicable uh, question, application level yeah, question, yeah, which can yeah, be applied yeah. to the real life situation. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Fine, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Because we need to prepare our students in such a manner because they are not yeah, used yeah, to we, such we will, a pattern. Yes. Yeah. True, true. Very, uh, very true. We have to do that. Yes. We have to do that. Yes, because uh, as far as other subjects are concerned, they don't have much problem because they already have such questions, assertive based questions, you know. But when it comes yeah. to language, it's typically new for them. So we need to give them practice. So I just wanted a sample of how we can ask. Uh, we, we may, you know, introduce them to such questions. Yeah, definitely we have to do it because it, it's all about... Um, uh, how things are related to the present scenario and how the children can relate to the topics. So such topics will be taken and questions based on that will be asked and uh, children will have to apply what they have learned in the uh, class. Okay, ma'am. Yeah, thank you so much. So it's like 10% uh, like, uh, uh, um, in 12th and 20% in 10th. That is how it is. Okay, ma'am. Okay. 10% and 20 percentage in 12th, that is how it is. Okay. Okay. 10 okay. percentage in 12th, case based question, 10 percentage in 12th, and 20 percentage in uh, 10th. Okay. So we need to give more practice for class 10 students. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Y yes, ma'am. And we are uh, hopefully, we are all expecting for samples because we need samples before give, we give the right practice. Yeah. yeah. Because Thank it's you, not like uh, science you. or uh, max. Because science and maths, uh, yes. we are very much familiar with the MCQs. 
and of course we yes. are familiar with mcqs in the literature part literature and grammar we were doing it also but when yes. it comes to extract writing, based we questions are, yeah we are uh, still in yeah. uh, still kept in dark and uh, i i hope that um, by the coming of the sample question paper things will be a little more uh, clear okay but uh, i so i much. i suggest that uh, english teachers please ensure that all these writing skills are not just for exams that will uh, see when you when you see the uh, syllabus 12th standard term 2 syllabus is uh, how to apply for a job so whatever we are teaching in the uh, writing uh, skill area it is definitely useful for the children in their life so uh, it not just an examination preparation but uh, to take all the learnings see that's what cbsc talks about it is about competency based learning all the learning is for their life so let's yes, not just focus on this exam for examination point of view let's give them uh, enough opportunity to write and uh, practice all these items yes ma'am because we have no idea about the writing section being asked for objective in an objective manner and yeah. we, i don't believe that they will be doing that because the purpose of writing section is lost when when it becomes objective so when we are all, fingers true. crossed and we are all waiting for samples yeah yeah let's let's hope so it will be coming out uh, i i i heard that it will be coming out uh, next week thank you so much ma'am any other queries also can be asked please. excuse me ma'am shall i ask one thing this is you know yes sir yes sir. Yes, sir. Please. Is, is there a common group for the English teachers here for this Hodeya, so that I can also join in case if we can share some of the questions, like maybe one or the other will be getting and it can be shared among. Shinoj, you please introduce from which school are you coming? I'm from Straight Path International School. This is in Panakkad. Ah, yes. Yes. We have it under Hodeya. and yes, uh, uh, the link will be provided uh, through your principal very soon thank so you so much any contacts in this group you can ask them to thank you so much thank you. Yes, and, uh, and all these uh, uh, model uh, questions yes. all these things uh, which whatever i am getting i can just forward uh, to uh, the sahodia office bearers so that they will be sharing it with you all that's that's so great of you ma'am I think our Jaymon sir also here. Jaymon sir, our academic director, sir, are you? Any other questions? Zarina, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, now, Phil, sir. You were consolidating a lot of queries from teachers. Are there any? Ah, uh, uh, yes, sir. Actually, our teachers always want a lot of samples. Ah, uh, yes. You know, especially when it comes to case base. Even myself, I was like uh, always expecting for some samples so that we can give a proper practice for mm -hmm. our children. Because when it comes to case based uh, reasoning type questions in English language. we obviously of course we link our chapters to real life situations and we go ahead but still we need samples because already parents and the children are probably they may be in uh, sort of uh, you know perplexed so um, yeah uh, we we'll look we will look there is a one of the details of the group there is a there is a question bank provided by cbs i think yes yes does it meet the requirements for the training yes sir but i, I think that Uh, uh, giving a lot of questions, question bank, up, uploading in WhatsApp group to children will not serve the purpose. Is what I believe. Uh, we need to focus on chapter wise, so that they will it will make uh, they'll get a better understanding. And let them then let them come back to the yes, ma'am. 
Yeah, and also uh, as of now, we don't have that uh, the new uh, pattern of questions are not yet uploaded. And one thing I would like to uh, share with you all: uh, if you go to the Diksha site, there are uh, plenty of multiple choice questions available in the Diksha. Uh, so I request all of you to have a check with that. Okay, uh, chapter wise, okay. MCQs are available in Diksha. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Uh, thank okay. you for that information too. Diksha app is also available for teachers. Uh, Diksha app is also available, and uh, if you check, uh, I mean, chapter-wise, MCQs are available in Diksha. So, if uh, mm -hmm. we don't have any other queries, Hadi sir, Hadi sir, principal is public school. Sir, is there anything to be added? Uh, no, sir, no, sir, uh, no, I don't have anything to add because I was the one who asked that question about keeping the records and it, it was properly answered and the session was highly informative for us also. So the, the presenter has been able to keep our mouth closed, uh, sorry, keep our mouth closed <laughs> afterwards. So beautifully done. <laughs> Absolutely. Samad sir, our academic joint convener, principal Alamin English school is also here. Is there anything to be added? Yes, now first sir, really this session was very really useful and fruitful. I think our old English faculty, they could, they could clear all of their doubts. And thanks for the ma'am. She has covered almost all the area of the very important concern. Thank you. I was, sir, I was uh, looking for Jaymon, sir. Could you support him? I think Jaymon, sir, I think he is not here in this That's meeting okay. now. Okay, okay teachers. Uh, any other queries? Otherwise, we'll wind up. And it, sir. And it, sir, also missing. So I think it's time to wind up, Smita ma'am. Taking a lot of efforts for us, a lot of time for us. We extend our heartfelt gratitude to you on behalf of Malapram Central Sahodia. And uh, we are expecting more resource sharing and uh, expertise talk uh, in future too. Definitely, sir. Definitely. I am only happy to be associated with uh, Malapram Central Sahodia. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. So let's thank you. Thank you, okay. sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the wonderful audience. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, let's uh, learn together. All these things are very new to us. So we have to uh, be patient enough and to uh, get into things, get deep, deeper into the things so that we implement the same in the class so that our children are uh, not put into difficulties because everything is new and, and I'm so sure that we will definitely be able to do it. See, we are fighting against something called Corona, right? So uh, yes. there is nothing uh, bigger than that or greater than that. Uh, so I'm sure that we'll be able to uh, rise up to the expectations of the children and uh, all, the, all the best to all the teachers. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. See you. Bye. Thank you.